What's up guys, Isaac here and I've got another good book for you guys, another book recommendation. This one's one of my favorites of all time and that is The 50th Law by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. And you won't believe how many times I've read this one. I've read this one at least three to four times I think. And um, I've got the hardcover, I've got the audio, I've got the digital version, I've gone through it all because there's so much insight in this book. Now you see, a lot of people are discouraged from reading this book because they see that it's co-authored by 50 Cent. And a lot of people have a certain um, perception or idea of 50 Cent based off what they see in the media, based off what they see on MTV. They might think it's just some you know, dumb thug, dumb hip hop head. But if you read this book, one of the first things that uh, gets highlighted is how intelligent 50 Cent really is and how much wisdom he has, right? You see, a lot of people don't know that um, when he was eight years old, he actually lost his mother. He never knew his father. His mom got murdered when he was eight. So he was basically set to uh live by himself and figure out how to survive by himself and how to get what he wanted and a way out of the ghetto for him initially was drug dealing but then he realized that that probably wasn't the best idea as a lot of his friends were dying a lot of them were going to jail so he moves, moved over to the music industry started doing some mixtapes did a mixtape campaign where eminem finally saw him and you, you, you know the story, there's, there's a lot of adversity, a lot of triumph, incredibly inspirational, but there's a lot of insight into this book as well. Robert Greene does not fail to deliver in this book, much like in The Four Year Laws of Power, much like in Day Three Strategies of War, Art of Seduction, he's always using cases in history and showing you how the law applies to that. So this book is about fearlessness, about conquering your fears. And he uses a lot of 50 cent story, a lot of cases in history. So there's a lot to gain out of it. Now, one of my favorite chapters in this book and what I'm going to talk about in this video is chapter 10, which is the last chapter, which is confront your mortality. So I'll read what it says here. In the face of our inevitable mortality, we can do one of two things. We can attempt to avoid the thought at all costs clinging to the illusion that we have all the time in the world or we can confront this reality accept and even embrace it converting our consciousness of death into something positive and active in adopting such a fearless philosophy we gain a sense of proportion become become able to separate what is petty from what is truly important knowing our days to be numbered we have a sense of urgency and mission we can appreciate life all the more for its impermanence. If we can overcome the fear of death, then there is nothing left to fear. And I love that chapter. That's just the intro. I really think that a lot of people kind of put death or try not to think about death because, you know, to a lot of people it's painful. Unless they're forced to think about death, unless they're forced by a sudden death of a family member or a near-death experience on their behalf. That's the only time that they really are awakened to the idea of them dying. That's why you get a lot of people doing all this dumb stuff, you know, like maybe driving down the road at 200 k's per hour, or kilometers per hour, and doing all kinds of ridiculous things. Because a lot of people are far removed from the concept of death. Death is something that's in movies, that's, that's far away, that's in Game of Thrones. It doesn't happen in real life until they're forced to see it. Now me, part of my life philosophy is I always, always, always come back to death. I always have this ticking noise in the back of my head, tick tock, tick tock, it's ever so silent, ever so quiet in the background. You can almost not hear it, but it's always a reminder. There's always a sense of urgency in my time in life. That's why I don't spend a lot of time doing a lot of bullshit. A lot of people ask me why it's why it's so easy for me to be disciplined, why I can spend so much time reading or my self-improvement or working on this YouTube channel or studying for my mechanical engineering degree. It's because I understand the value of life. That's why for me, it's hard to camp outside the Apple store for a day or two to get the latest Apple phone. That's not important to me. I know the value of life because there's always the reminder of death in the back of my head, partly because of read books like this partly because of stoic philosophy and negative visualization and stuff like that. But don't get it confused and think that it's some sort of weird uh, fixation with death, but I understand the reality of it. I confront reality as it is, which is also a chapter in this book, Confront Reality As It Is, Intense Realism. So 
I think that's a good mindset to have in regards to your life because it really drives you to push forward and try achieve every fucking thing you can possibly achieve. It really drives you to do what it takes, not to worry about the petty bullshit, as Robert Green says. Not to worry about the things that are not important. So if someone doesn't like you, you don't give a fuck about that. That's not important. Other things other people will spend a lot of conscious effort on, a lot of their energy on, it doesn't phase you because you understand the value of your time, you understand the value of life. So that's just a quick little insight into this book here. Fucking get it. Buy this book. This is one of my favorite books, if not my favorite book. And um, of course, I'll have a link in the description for the Amazon and all that. And yeah, just read this shit and tell me what you think. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. Hope you liked that. Peace, like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. See you next time. Peace. Do it! Just...